about today is uh, N1MM Plus set up from beginner to intermediate. What we'll do is rather than tell you what N1MM can do, I wanna show you what N1MM can do. And along the way, hopefully I'll add a few things as why you might wanna do a certain thing. There aren't any secrets in anything I'm gonna tell you. It's all in the manual somewhere, many, many pages uh, of, of the manual. After there'll be a, a file that has the links that will take you to uh, the various pages and then one MM's webpage that uh, can also help you out. How we're going to do it is uh, I've got, uh, I'm working on a, a 14 inch laptop. The N1MM is a complex program, but you don't need to do everything to get started. And that's what we will go over, uh, the things that, that I think are useful to get started. I'll give you some demos on sideband and on CW. And we'll start N1MM with just the basic windows. All right, so this is, this is what you get at the beginning of M1, N1MM. You get an entry window, this one down here, and a log window. So what I want to do is, uh, the first thing to do is to choose, a, or to choose a contest. So you need to decide on what database you want to put it in. Uh, some people have a database uh, for every year. So all the contests for a year are in one database. Other people have a, uh, a database for each contest. Uh, either way works. The one that I use is one for every year. And so all of my contests for a year in the same database. So I've already got one open. Uh, so I'm not gonna open another one, but this is where you would do it. Then we wanna start a, uh, a new log in the database and if, for example, you wanted to start a, uh, one of the CQ contests, you click on the log type and you type in the first letter, C, and it brings up all the Cs. Here's all the CQ contests. But for this example, uh, what I wanna do is the Washington Salmon Run. So all the state QSO parties are listed under QSO parties. So I type in the Q and Here's QSO party. And then over here under state for log type QSO party, you have to click on the little arrow and you go down all the way to the bottom and here's Washington. So now we're set up for the Washington QSO party or the salmon run. We need to take care of these uh, category things. We wanna be a single op, we're gonna do all bands. I don't have an amplifier, so we'll be low. I want to demonstrate both sideband and CW. So the mode is uh, CW or sideband and CW or fixed station assisted. Assisted means you're using a, a cluster to help you find stations with the spots or non-assisted means that uh, you're doing it all on your own. So you got to decide which one you want to do. Assisted generally means that you can uh, contact stations faster because you don't have to tune for them because somebody spots them for you. That works very nicely in, in uh, CW, not quite as well in sideband, but it still works. Or you can be non-assisted uh, and find all the stations uh, on your own. For, the, for this, I wanna be assisted. I've got one transmitter. And since I don't live in, uh, in Washington, my exchange, will be 59 or 599 and my state, which is Idaho. Now in the SIN exchange, you don't put in the RST. That goes somewhere else, which I will show you in a little bit. So you just put in the, the exchange, Idaho, or if you're in Washington, you put in the county SPO, for example, and the operators K7TQ, that's me. That came from the station data. So we say, okay. And then you get this little message here that says, you're entering this QSO party as an out-of-state participant because your ARL section is Idaho. Well, that's what we want, so we say okay. But if you wanted to, uh, it to be different, if, if I wanted to go to, uh, to operate in Idaho, then I need to change that. So it's config, change your station data. Here's all the information that you put in when you uh, set up N1MM. And down here, ARL section. So I would change that from Idaho 
to EWA for Eastern Washington or WWA for Western Washington. But for now, we'll just stay in Idaho. But that's how you operate a QSO party uh, in a different section than where you live. Okay, now what we need to do is make the radio and the computer talk to each other. So to do, to do that, it's config and then configure ports and mode control and then hardware, the first tab that comes up. What we need to know in advance, either write, you need to write it down or just be able to remember it, is what COM port, either serial or more likely a USB port, is connected to your radio. So, so, and you need to know the baud rate. So over here under port, we choose the pick arrow, and I know in advance that it's COM3. Go over to radio, and lots of choices for various radios that you have. The one that I'm working with today is a Elecraft K2. I need to set the baud rate, so that's under details and set. And here's where you set the baud rate. I know it's 4,800, and the parity is in eight stop bits or eight data bits and one stop bit. I also turn DTR always off and always and RTS always off, and it's radio number one. Leave all these unchecked. If you're not sure of what uh, what the N81 and always on and always on or always off always off are, there's suggestions down here. These part of the suggestions usually work, but the baud rate, you got to know what it is, otherwise you won't be in connection. So I say, okay. I go over here to mode control and we check, use radio mode. Whatever your radio says is the mode you're in, uh, side, uh, lower sideband, upper sideband or CW, that's what uh, the computer will say. And whether you're using RIDI or not, you, it's best, I think, to change this to no change. So we say, okay. And then here in the entry window, uh, here's the frequency that I'm set on. And I'm turning the big knob over here. And you can see that it's following the, uh, the frequency. And my radio says 7182.96. That's what uh, N1M says. My radio says L, lower sideband. So we verify that the radio control works. Now, there's a couple things we want to do before every contest. Those earlier things, you just do them uh, one time for each radio. Uh, so you don't need to do those every time. But these things you need to do before every contest. So tools, download and install latest partial check, which his name is master.scp, and it comes from the internet. So you click on that, N1MM goes out and it finds it and it loads it in for you. Gives you this little message and you say, okay. The next one is tools, and we want to download latest country file, wl underscore cty.dat. We click on that, and it tells you that it was happy it found it. A little later, we'll go over why those things are useful to have. Now, what I'd like to do is a little demo of, uh, of N1MM in actual use. So we're in the Washington Salmon Run which we verify up here in the log, in, in the, the log window, WAQSO parties. Okay, so we turn around and up oh, there's, there's a call. And it's, uh, it's uh, the person saying CQ Salmon Run, November 7, Golf Charlie X, do Golf Charlie Oscar. He says it better than I do. So we type in N7 GCO and we say Kilo 7 Tango Quebec. And what uh, happens is he comes back and he says, Kilo 7 Tango, Quebec, 5-9, uh, Spokane, Sugar Papa Oscar. So he contacted us. We know he's talking to us. So we hit the space bar. The space bar moves us over to the exchange window. It skipped over the sent RST and the received RST. In a contest, those are always 5-9 five, nine or 599 five, nine, nine if it's CW. So there's no point little point in, in bothering to go into those particular windows. So we I always hit the space bar, need to get used to hitting the space bar. It'll be even more important in CW. So we hit the space bar and we type in SPO. His call turned red, which means that that's a legitimate 
uh, exchange uh, for, for this QSO party. And we say, thank you, 5-9 Idaho, India Delta. And he comes back and he says, Kilo 7 Tango, Quebec, thank you, CQ contest, Washington Salmon Runs. Uh, and then we hit the enter uh, and our contact with him is over. So up here in the entry window, here's all the information that you need for the log. Here's the, the date and the time, the call, the frequency, because it got read from the, uh, the computer or from the radio, the, uh, the two RSTs. This M is mode. And as you can do on any of these windows, if you put your mouse at the edge of it, you can make it bigger so that you can see the whole thing. The exchange was SPO and it's a multiplier. Okay, now then we tune a little bit more and here's another one and in this particular one is N7UA. So we say Kilo 7 Tango Quebec and he comes back and he says Kilo 7 Tango Quebec 59 Grant. So we hit the space bar and he didn't tell us what the abbreviation is, but we figure it's probably a three letter one. So we type in GRA for Grant. And we say Kilo 7 Tango Quebec, or we don't say that, but we say uh, thank you 59 Idaho. And so we think we're good, but we hit and we hit the enter to log it. But we get this red dot down here. It says missing invalid exchange. So what that means is the abbreviation for Grant County is not GRA. So because he's already off calling somebody else, we don't go back and bother him. So we grab our cheat sheet and we look at it and we find that, oh, the abbreviation for Grant County is GRAN. And so we type in the N and now then his call turns red and we're good. So we hit the enter and that one gets logged too. Okay, and then I'll do one more. Uh, we tune around some more, and here we see W7, or we hear W7WA calling. So we say Kilo 7 Tango Quebec, and he comes back and he says something we don't quite hear, but what we copy is King, 59 King. This time we're smart enough to know that it's a four letter one. So we type in King, so we say, thank you, 59 Idaho. And he goes back uh, to calling CQ. So we hit the enter. But then for whatever reason, we figure out, hmm, he didn't say Kilo 7 Tango Quebec, thank you. He said Kilo 7 Tango Mary. So he wasn't talking to us. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of this uh, contact in the log because we're sure that he didn't talk to us several ways to do it but the simplest one is to move the cursor up to the one you want to get rid of right click on it and get this window we don't want to edit it we just want to get rid of it so we're going to delete that contact and yes we're sure we want to get rid of it so now it's out of our log and we're in good shape again okay now let's talk a little bit about the various windows this one down here is the entry window the things of most importance here are most useful are these two columns labeled CW and <clears throat> PH. So this is CW and phone. And what these things do is they will change the band. So if you mouse over it, you can see what it'll do. So a left click on the 80 in the phone will QSY to 3810. <clears throat> on, uh, on 20, it'll QSY to 14200. Over here in CW, uh, it'll take us to 80 meter CW. The other thing that I want you to always remember is use the space bar. You can tab between the windows, but the tab takes you to the, to the RST or the RS, but you don't need to do that. Use the space bar, okay? Uh, okay, <clears throat> the other ones, that's a nice setup. If you go somewhere over here outside of these various boxes and right click, then you get this uh, menu. The, these down here are action buttons. I don't use the mouse very much uh, when I'm contesting, so I don't particularly like those, so I turn them off. It also made the entry window a little bit smaller. And then another one, I don't have an antenna for 160. So there's no point in seeing that. So I'm gonna 
make that a little nicer. So change the band panel display. So over here, we want 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. Exit. And now 160 went away. Just a little nice handy thing to have. Then one more that I like is right click again, show GMT time. Here's the GMT time down to the seconds. And where I find that useful is toward the end of a contest. If it uh, tells you how, how many seconds you have left to make a cue. And what the rules say is that the hour ends at 59, not at back at zero again, because that's 61 minutes. But I like to see this one. I think that's a, a nice handy one to have. OK, let's talk about the log window. That's this one up here. Except for the uh, except for a few of them, all of the windows have these little arrows over here on the side. And if you click on the up arrow, it will change, it will slowly change the font size. If you click on the down arrow, it will make it smaller. And up here it tells you what the size is. So if you think this is too small, then you can uh, make it bigger or smaller, make the font bigger or smaller. It doesn't change the window size, but it makes the font bigger or smaller. The upper half of this window is your log. It has all of all of the log in there, and you can only see probably in this case three or perhaps four, but you can make this like any of the windows. You can make it whatever size you want, okay? The bottom half is if you type a call in down here in the entry window, and we'll type in N7UA. First of all, down here in the entry window, it tells us he's a dupe. And it in the bottom half, it tells you what the details are of all the contacts you've already made with them. The other thing that you can do is up here is, is click on a call, and it will tell you uh, all the contacts you made with that particular person. And like any of the windows, you can move it anywhere you want. I like them stacked like this. But if you prefer them set like that, you can do it. Uh, I'm going to put it back like I like it. OK, then most all of the windows, you can do this. If you forget some of the details in any of the windows, if you right click on uh, in, a, in a blank space, then go down here and here's a help. So you type help, up comes your browser. And there's the appropriate N1MM page that talks about the log window in great detail. So that works on any of the windows, almost all of the windows. It doesn't work on the, the entry window. But you get help with the right click on just about anything. <clears throat> so now let's, uh, let's do a, a little bit more demo. So let's go to 20 meters. We've decided that uh, we can't find anything on uh, anything more on 40, so we're gonna go to, to 20. I did that by clicking on the phone and the 20, and my radio changed to 14200. That's probably a little low, so I'm gonna spin the dial <clears throat> and move it up. But, okay. So you can do that, or you can just change the bands on your radio, however you do that, and the uh, the computer will, N1MM will follow the changes. So you can change it on the radio. Or you can, in the uh, entry window, enter 14, 2, 4, 0, oh, and it will change to 14, 240. So direct entry in the uh, frequency in uh, kilohertz in the uh, call window, or click over here on the band panel, or just change the band on your radio. So we tune around a bit and we hear N7GCO calling again. So I won't go through all this stuff this time, but he, he answers us and we hit the space bar. And this time it knows, or at least it thinks he's in Spokane. So it already filled that in right here, SPO, it filled that in for us. So we go back and we say, thank you, 59 Idaho. And we hit the enter and it's logged. And so it appears both up here in the entry in the in the log and down here in the where we've already contacted him a couple of times. 
All right, one more. We tune some more. And we hear WS7I, which I think would be a little unusual to hear him on sideband, but we might hear him. So we call him. He answers us. And what we type in sort of by mistake is SNO instead of SPO, but we really don't recognize that. And it, his call sign turned red, so that's a legitimate abbreviation. So we hit the enter. But then we look up here and we see, oh, he's not, he didn't say uh, Snoqualmie, he said Spokane. <clears throat> Several ways to make changes up here in, uh, in, the, in the log window. The simplest one in my book is you go to whatever it is you want to change, double click on it, and then use the back arrow to go and erase whatever you need to. So we type in SPO and it changed it. So we fixed that one. So another way to change things, you can change the call sign, you can change the frequency, but most likely it would be the call sign or the exchange would be the things that you would want to uh, to change. I will see that was sideband. Let's talk a little bit about CW. That, in my opinion, is where N1M really shines. So we've got to choose a keying method. We can either use the DTR or the, S, uh, the RST lines off the serial port that, that, is, uh, that is made by the uh, USB connection, or we can use a wind key emulation. In DOS days, the DTR and the RST lines worked just fine because you had complete control over them. But then Windows took over and it doesn't allow you to manipulate those near as well. So sometimes, uh, at least in the slower, older computers, the king by DTR didn't work very well. The faster computers work a lot better now. Although last week, a couple of weeks ago, in IARU, I heard several stations, or perhaps the same one several times, stuttering. Instead of uh, da da da, they would say da da da. So that doesn't work quite as well as, as other things. The wind key, that's that's a better one. Or another one that's a little cheaper, uh, not quite as much functionality, because in a much smaller box is a Morty. And I'll show a picture of a Morty, and we'll have a link to, to that. Again, we need to know what the COM port is that is connected to our wind key or the DTR line that we're going to use. So we set that up with config and then configure ports. And over here, we want to go to uh, hardware and we choose a port, a different one, not on the, not on this Elecraft line. And I know that it's five, it's not a radio, it's a CW or other, and we need to set it. And what I prefer is DTR always off, this one always off, although this is where you set CW, uh, so always off. And I'm using a Morty, so I check WinKey, it's an emulation of WinKey. I say okay, and then one more, if you're using Morty or WinKey, you need to go over here to the wind key. You need to choose this in case you're using paddles uh, hooked into the Morty or the wind key or iambic A or iambic B. If you're a CW operator, you know what those two different things are. So you need to make that one be whatever it is you learned on. And then the other one that uh, I prefer because Morty, at least uh, some of the Mortys, the later ones do have a, a speed pot, but uh, the earlier ones don't. So you can ignore the speed pot or, or not. I choose to ignore it, your choice. So you say, okay. Um, so now we're set up for CW. Now then these keys down here become highly useful. They're the function keys. What they do is they send CW for you. And the, how you define all these things is, um, very useful, but it takes far more time than I've got for a good discussion. But what I do want to show you is this <clears throat> N1M comes, out, comes with this um, loaded. So open it. And here's a good description of all, all the stuff, not all, but much of the stuff you need to know 
about how to set up the various messages. The biggest thing to remember is that any line that starts with this pound sign is a comment line. The other big thing is the first 12 lines, no matter what they say, are the run messages. We'll talk about the difference between run inside and uh, search and pounce. The next 12 lines, again, no matter what they say, are the search and pounce messages. And they get mapped F1, F2, F3. Again, doesn't matter what title you put out here, that's the first 12 go to run, the second 12 goes to S and P. If you can remember that, you won't have near as much trouble as many people do with their function keys. First thing we need to do is <clears throat> get out of phone and get into CW. So I'm gonna go over here and change over to CW. One other thing that I forgot to do, um, config, and then we want to check enter sends message. All right, so I've modified one just for the salmon run. So I right click on it, right click on one of the, the buttons, and here's what I've got for the salmon run. If I'm calling CQ, since I'm not in in Washington, I call CQ Washington, and the asterisk means it sends my call. There's the first twelve, and they're they're blue, and here's the second 12. Now, what we want is intersends message. So what intersends message does is it anticipates what the next function key is, and it's ready to send that when you hit the enter. It makes the use of N1MM much, much easier than trying to remember, oh, do I hit F2 now and or F5? You just hit the enter key. And I'll demonstrate that. So in my book, you should always use intersends message for CW. We turn that on with config, intersends message that was off. I turn it on. You can also do it with a control M. So it's it's turned on. And now then these two things have some use. You can either search and pounce, which means that you're hunting for people that are calling CQ and you answer them. And the order that you send things is a little bit different than if you're running, which means you send the CQ. Um, and so the nice thing about uh, there now it looks better. Okay, I, what, I, what I did was I made the entry window a little bit bigger. So now instead of just seeing F4 by itself, I see what these things are going to do. They tell you, what uh, they're going to do. You've, you've told it what message you want there. <clears throat> so I'm in search and pounce. And I tune around and here, <clears throat> now then I hear Kilo 7 Golf Sugar, except of course it's in CW, so it's uh, Kilo 7 GS. I'm in search and pounce, so I hit enter. It's yellow, this F4 down here is yellow. So what it's gonna send is my call. So it sent that sent uh, K7TQ. And then he comes back and I hear, I hear the K7TQ. So I know he's talking to me. I hit the, the space bar. Again, it jumped over the RSTs. And what he sends is SPO. So I typed that in. And as soon as I typed it in, then the uh, function key, the yellow went to the exchange. So if I hit the enter, it will uh, send uh, my exchange. I chose that to send his call so I know I'm talking to him. You can put that in or, or not. And then 5NN, which is 599, and then ID for Idaho. And then he comes back, and I, what I copy in CW is thank you. And then he goes on and uh, he, uh, he calls for more. This 30 words a minute is is awfully fast. There's three ways to change that. On your keyboard, you can hit the page down, which changed it by two, two words a minute. So I hit it down again, and we'll just go down to 18 words a minute. You can also hit the up, which makes it go up. With your mouse, you can hit these little arrows, and it goes down two, or it goes up two, or you can 
put the cursor there and wipe that out and put in 17 words a minute. Okay, so three ways to change it. And now we tune around some more and we hear N7ZUF calling. So we hit the enter and it sent our call and a space. He comes back to us uh, and we get the 599, but it, his, uh, his count is garbled. We, we can't get it, he faded out, so we didn't get it. So we don't know what to put in there. But what, what is highlighted is this F8 key, which is a question mark. So we just hit the enter. We don't have to hit the F8, we hit the enter. So it hit, sent a question mark. And ZUF knows that we, he needs to send it again. And he either sends 599 and uh, his county, or he just sends his county. Better to just send his county. And what we copy this time is WHI, because he's in Whitman, and his call turned red. So we know that's good. Idaho, and we're done. Okay, so good anticipation of what needs to be sent next in InterSend's message. It takes a little while to get used to it, but once you do, uh, you don't have to hit many keys other than to type in the call sign and the enter key. Let's suppose that uh, we've worked all the band and we're ready to send uh, some CQ ourselves. So we tune around and we find uh, this frequency that we think is uh, open. And over here, if you look F1 in search and pounce, sends QRL. And so I hit the F1. It sends QRO, which means is the frequency in use. And we wait a little while. And what that key did was it switched us to run. So now here's all our run macros, our run function keys. And what's highlighted is F1. So if we hit the enter, it sends CQ, WA, K7, TQ. And this time we hear N7, GCO, which would be a rare thing to hear, but we might hear that anyway. So we type in N7GCO. And once we've typed that call in, then two keys are highlighted. So we hit the enter. So it, it sends his call and 599 Idaho. And it jumped over in one MM on its own after I hit the enter, jumped over and it pre filled Spokane. So he sends 5NN and SPO, and we don't have to type it in. It's already there, or we can type it in either one. And we hit the enter, and it sends 73 K7TQ test, or Washington, I'm not sure what it sent. Uh, so wherever that cursor is, that determines what's gonna be sent next. Okay, so you just keep going, keep sending CQ. Suppose though, but nobody answers. So we send CQ again. And because we have a uh, break in, we heard somebody in between ours. So I hit the escape key and it stopped the sending of it. So the escape key will stop the sending of anything. Okay, a, a nice useful key to have, particularly if you have uh, QSK on your radio involved. Now, those, these two windows are the things that I consider the minimum that you need, but there's lots of helpful windows. So let's, let's go over those. The first one that I wanna show is the check window. So window and check. I like to see it over here next to uh, my entry window. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And what it does is it helps us with call signs. Now let's, let's go to uh, Let's change the band to, to 15 just for fun. So we click there and the change in CW to, uh, to 21033. We're in search and pounce. And we tune, we tune around and up. And what we copy is 7JP and 7JP. So we type that in. We hit the enter. It sent our call. And so he answers us, we hear that, we hit the space bar and we go over in the exchange. And what all that we hear is CH, but we don't hear the rest of it. 
we're not clear whether it was an E or an I or, or maybe it was nothing. What the check window has shown us is that, first of all, over here in this column, N7JP, that's a good call. And these are a possible matching calls. This one is off by one, the one at the top of my cursor, N7JPF, it might have been, but we know it's N7JP. This one is the really useful one, though. This shows possible matching exchanges. And what it says is the only uh, abbreviation in the Washington QSO party that starts with CH is CHE. So we hit the E, his call sign turned red. There's a little check mark there, it means it's good. So we hit the enter and it's in our exchange. We logged him in, we're good. We made another contact. So the next window that I think is useful is the Telnet window. So we get it from window, Telnet. And I've already cho <clears throat> chosen WS7I. That's a, a good one. Uh, K7AR is also a good one. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference which ones you choose, except that if you choose a local one, then you're more likely to be uh, with other people that you know if you want to talk to them via the, the packet. So there's WS7I. I hit the reconnect. You can either do that, either set it up for manual or not. I prefer it to not be manual. Up in here, I type in and then I type in my call sign K7TQ. I hit the enter. It knows me. It says, hello, Randy. And uh, it will put up spots. Usually, we don't look at this window. We, we minimize it. We keep it open, but we minimize it. But there is one other thing that we need from that window. So we don't need to have closed it right away. Go over here to the filters. Man DX spot timeout in minutes. It's set for 60 in something uh, like a CQ Worldwide or ARL DX. 60 is probably reasonable. It's a little long, maybe 30. In a shorter contest, or not a shorter contest, but in a contest where people move around a lot more, Something more like 10 minutes would be appropriate. But for the demo, I'm going to leave it 60 because I want uh, to have a lot of spots. And then this one, randomize incoming spot frequencies. You can check it or you can not check it. In a station that's getting a lot of, of contacts, there'll be a pile up on it. And if they're using the cluster, then everybody's on exactly the same frequency, whatever the uh, cluster reports. And it's very hard for the DX station or the other station to separate out the calls. So by checking this box, N1MM and one mm will randomize your frequency a little bit, it tries to do it not so much that it puts it out of, puts it out of his band pass, but it's something to think about whether you want to check it or not. I'm going to leave it checked. So we make a, we minimize that. The next one that we want to look at is the band map. It comes up over there. I like to see it over here on this side of my entry window. And I like it to be tall. Okay. And what the first thing that you can see is that, uh, this previous contact that we made on 15 meters within 7JP, it got spotted right here, but it just spotted locally. It's just on our band map. It didn't get spotted to the cluster. More likely, we're gonna see something on 40 meters right now, this time of day. And sure enough, there are some other uh, calls. So here's a call AD4EP, and here's another one, W3W, JV, and there's a C6AZM, and then more up here. Now, there's several ways to, that you can get to a call. One of them, if you like to use the mouse, you can just go to that one, click on it one time, it changed the frequency, it put his call in the on deck, and uh, it moved to the band map to there. So. Anything that's in this on deck, that's what it's called up here above the entry window. If you hit the enter, it will move the move that on deck call into the entry window. You don't have to type it in again, and it will send CQ. I'm going to speed this up a little bit uh, so that the demo goes a little faster. So 
The F4 is checked, we're ready to go. So we hit the enter and it said K7TQ and I'm not on the air. So I've got this into a dummy load. So we're not going out over the air. So he comes back to us. We hit the space bar. Remember, that's what we want to use, the space bar. And let's say that uh, he's in, uh, J J we copy J-E-F. And we're not sure if there was another F or not. But again, over here, it tells us that the proper abbreviation for Jefferson is J-E-F-F. -F. So we type the two Fs in. There's a check mark. And uh, we hit the enter. It said his call, 5NN, Idaho. Put it up there in the, uh, in the thing. We can also get the uh, move, move to, the, uh, to the next one with the arrow keys. Not, not page up or page down, but the arrow keys on your keyboard. If, if you hold down the control and the down arrow, it will move downward relative to the band map. That's the opposite of the frequency. So you need to get used to the, the arrow keys move relative to the band map, not to the, uh, not to the frequency. Uh, so this one was in 9DX. So we got him. And we can, uh, again, hit that. Uh, and let's say he doesn't come back to us. We've tried several times. He doesn't ever come back to us, so we're not going to work him. We need to get rid of this. So we could hit the delete key several times or move the cursor over in backspace. But there's a much easier way to do that. Alt-W wipes it out. Wipe. Alt-W wipes it out. Okay. Um, the next the next window I want to show you is available malts. And I like it over here next to my, uh, my band map. And I like it tall. So you grab the top and make it tall. This one has two different pieces. The top piece at the top is what's the activity that's going on on the various bands. And right now, because it's uh, CQ ops while, I'm, while we're recording this, there's lots of activity. So 40 meters has 56 cues on it, 20 meters has 33 and 15 has one. Um, we're on 20, oh, it was the default was mulch only, but we want to see mulch and cues. So here's everybody. Here's their call, the frequency that they're on, and the direction. You can move this to, to see more of it, but the direction. And you can sort these any way you want. Right now, they're sorted uh, on frequency, they're sorted on call. We can sort them on by frequency so that uh, all of the 40s are together. If we use your mouse wheel or grab this slide over here, we go down, there's all the 40s. One that's useful in the X contest is the direction. So we want to sort them by direction. So we reverse sort them. And there aren't any JAs on, but if they were, all the JAs would be here. So if you got a beam, you can get all the JAs together. Uh, and then you come back here and there's the various calls. There's some handy shortcut keys. Some of them I covered, some of them not. Uh, suppose that you uh, call this this K9DX. I'm going to hit the enter key. And uh, I want to send the same thing. So I just hit the enter. That, that certainly works. But the equal key. The equal key sends the same thing you sent last time, and it'll send multiple ones. Suppose uh, he answers us, and we find out that uh, he is in Snoqualmie, so we type in SNO, and we send, sends it, and he says again, and we can hit the F2 and the F5 to send the whole thing, or we just hit the equal sign, and it sends the pair of, of things that, that we did. I already demonstrated for you 
the, uh, the escape key, it stops sending of any message that you're sending. Uh, another useful one is Alt-K, whoops, not Alt-K, Control-K, and it brings up a, a window here. It says send CW. So suppose things are slow and so we want to be a little bit uh, friendly. So we type in, thank you. Thank you, Jay. And, and we send something goofy. Then you hit the escape and it goes away. So you can uh, send from the keyboard uh, or you can send with the paddle, either one. And then one other one that I want to show you a, a nice handy one. If, you, if you're doing multiple contests, for example, uh, in the Salmon Run, also the Texas QSO party will be going on. I don't have Texas QSO party loaded up, but if you Alt F and then you type in whatever number, well, it, it will just go to the to seven QP, you type in two, and now it brought up seven QP, and here it is seven QP. So you can switch contests quickly in that one. So Alt F, and the one we want to go to is number two. So there it is with our log. Okay, now a couple of motivational windows. Uh, these don't fit nicely on my small, my 14 inch screen, but they do fit better on a, a big screen. The first one is the info window. Perhaps the most useful thing I think uh, in the entry window is this one, last QSO. How long was it since we made our last QSO? We don't want that to just climb moon out of sight. Here's some uh, graphs that show how you're doing. You can define those, how you do it uh, is, well is well documented. This one down here shows any th that anytime you get spotted, it will appear down here. So that's a useful one to have. Get it uh, nicer on a bigger window. Another one is uh, the gray line, a map of the world with the, the sunrise, sunset, terminator line on it, and the subsolar point, and some of the stations that are spotted. So this tells us, ooh, right now is a good time to, uh, to be heading our beam in the direction of, uh, of the terminator and getting over into Eastern Europe. So a nice little thing to have, not necessary, but a, a nice one. Score summary is another one. So this one shows more detail uh, of what we've done. The bottom line of all this, the 10 and the six, also appears down here in the entry window. 10, six, down here at the bottom. So 10 Qs, six bolts, and our score is 156. Same thing it had here, but a nicer breakdown here helps us uh, keep going. And then the last one that I'll show you is multipliers. And for the, the salmon run, we want to go down here to counties other. We must make it a little bit bigger. And we want uh, this one right now is showing the worked ones. Oh, yeah, I've got to uncheck this show only worked. And there's all the counties in Washington, and it highlights the ones that we've that we've worked. Okay, so I probably run over, but uh, that's uh, what I have to to share with you on how N1MM can be useful for beginners and intermediate users.